Welcome to Traveler's Tales. I am your host, Greg Alonzo. Today I will be your guide through history as we take a look at Timur the Conqueror. Before we begin, just a quick reminder that we post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday with special editions on Thursdays. Moving right along, mythology tells us one thing while archaeology tells us another. Who was Timur the Conqueror? Was he related to the Great Khan? What lands did he rule? Today we will answer these questions as we take a look at this undefeated commander who is regarded as one of the greatest military leaders and tacticians in history. Who was Timur? Timur Gurkhani, or in his native language of Chagatai, he was known as Shuja Uddin Timur, with Timur meaning iron. He was a Turco-Mongol conqueror who founded the Timurid Empire. Timur ruled the lands that are now modern-day Afghanistan, Iran, and Central Asia. He was undefeated in all of his campaigns and proved himself to be a military and tactical genius. Timur was known to be brutal on the battlefield and stopped at nothing to achieve his aims. Yet this ruthless warrior was a great patron of the arts and architecture. He was also fond of interacting with intellectuals and his reign introduced the Timurid Renaissance. How did someone who was only a minor noble in his Barlas Mongolian tribe rise to such prominence? Even more surprising is that Timur was a cripple. Hence, as we know him in the West, Timur the Lame or Tamerlane. It is believed that when Timur was a young boy, he tried to steal a sheep, but the shepherd shot him with an arrow in both his right leg and hand, and both injuries disabled him for life. An alternate story exists. One school of thought is that he received his injuries while serving as a mercenary to the Khan of Sistan, which is in southwest Afghanistan. By the year 1360, Timur had gained prominence as a military leader whose troops were mostly Turkic tribesmen. Timur took part in many campaigns in Transoxiana with the Khan of the Chagadai Kainite. Allying himself in both cause and family connection, he played a vital role in the invasion of Khorasan. As the head of a thousand horsemen, he led a successful military expedition in subjugation of both Khwarazam and Urgench. Now disputes rose among the tribes as to whom shall rule be given over these conquered lands. Timur allied himself with the Khan of the Eastern Chagatai Kainit and was rewarded with Transoxiana. Now as chief of the Burlas, Timur repelled an invasion by Ilyas Koha. It was in this period that Timur reduced the Chagatai Khans of the position of figureheads while he ruled in their name. Also during this period, Timur and his brother-in-law, Amir Hussein, became rivals and antagonists. The relationship between them became strained after Hussein abandoned efforts to carry out orders to finish Ilya Koha. Timur then built up several alliances to contain his brother-in-law. At length, Hussein surrendered to Timur and was later assassinated. Timur then married Hussein's wife, Sarai Muk Khanum, a descendant of Chinggis Khan. This then allowed Timur to become the imperial ruler of the Chagatai tribe. Timur's Turco-Mongolian heritage provided opportunities and challenges as he sought to rule the Mongol Empire and the Muslim world. According to Mongol traditions, Timur could not claim the title of Khan or rule the Mongol Empire because he was not a descendant of Chinggis Khan. Therefore, Timur set up a puppet Khan as the nominal ruler. Timur instead used the title of Amir, meaning general and acted in the name of the Chagatai ruler. To reinforce this position, Timur claimed the title Guregin, meaning royal son-in-law, when he married Sarai, a princess of Chinggisid descent. In the Islamic world, Timur could not claim the title of Caliph. This was because he was not of the tribe of the Prophet Muhammad. Timur then created the myth and image of himself as a supernatural personal power ordained by God. Now he was able to claim lineage to both Chinggis Khan and the Prophet. Timur spent the next 35 years in various wars and expeditions. He then extended his rule into the lands of foreign potentates and he defeated them in battle. His conquests to the west and northwest brought him lands near the Caspian Sea and the banks of the Ural and Volga. Conquests in the south and southwest encompassed almost every province in Persia, including Baghdad, Karbala, and northern Iraq. What about Timur's religious views? 
he was a practicing Sunni Muslim. He most likely favored the Naqshbandi school, which was quite influential in his homeland. He was known to have befriended many Muslim scholars of the day. With regard to family, Timur had 43 wives as well as several concubines. As for children, he had several sons and daughters. Upon his death, Timur was ultimately succeeded by his youngest son, Shah Rukh. Timur's legacy is mixed at best. While Central Asia blossomed under his reign, many of the cities he conquered were sacked, destroyed, and their populations massacred. In Arabia, Iraq, Persia, and India, some of his greatest atrocities were carried out. It is believed that through warfare and mass slaughter, Timur was responsible for the deaths of some 17 million people. This brings us to the end of Timur the Conqueror. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Traveler's Tales. If you enjoyed this video, please becoming a channel sponsor. Your support will enable us to continue making quality videos and buying me a coffee always makes my day. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Traveler's Tales. This really is the best way to help our channel grow. Until we meet again at the crossroads of folklore and fact, Cartistos.